today we are going today we are discussing about the case cbi versus anubam kulkarni this case was held in 1992 now recently supreme court reconsidered this case so in this case an individual uh, kulkarni was arrested and was produced before the chief metropolitan magistrate regarding the abduction of four diamond merchants and he pretended to be sick and was admitted to the hospital for the treatment of his illness and kulkarni was again remanded to judicial custody by the magistrate and thereafter he sent to the jail so the investigating officer was applied to the chief metropolitan magistrate for police custody of kulkarni and the police remand of kulkarni was refused and a revision was filed before the high court against the order of magistrate so the high court granted the accused bail without deciding on the issue subsequently the order of high court was challenged by cbi so the main issue of the case was whether an accused can be sent to the police custody rather than judicial custody after the expiry of initial period of 15 days here supreme court considered the question of whether a person arrested and produced before the nearest magistrate as required under section 167 clause 1 of crpc still be sent to the police custody after the expiry of initial period of 15 days as provided so here court made several observations on this uh, here the court observed that if any person is arrested under section 57 of crpc a person should be produced before the nearest magistrate within 24 hours irrespective of their jurisdiction of the magistrate to try the case and if judicial magistrate is not uh, unavailable is avail unavailable the police officer may produce the accused to the nearest executive magistrate and the honorable apex court held that after the expiry of first period of uh, 15 days a uh, further remand can only be in judicial custody so in the case uh, in the so investigation is not completed within the period of 90 days or 60 days the accused has to be released on a bail as provided under section 167 clause 2 of crpc so we know that the main objections for of section 167 is to well settled that it is supplementary to section 57 of crpc and it is clear from section 57 that investigation should be completed in the first instance within 24 hours and if it cannot be done the arrested person should be brought by the police before the magistrate as provided under section 167 so in the case the state delhi administration versus darampal in this case it was held that after 15 days mentioned in the section 167 clause 2 the accused can only be kept in a judicial custody or any other custody as ordered by the magistrate but not the custody of police also in suresh kumar jain versus the state of maharashtra the nature of obligation on the magistrate before whom the accused is produced to be released on bail and non filing of charge sheet within the stipulated period of the time is mandatory so in such case any detention beyond the stipulated time period except on non filing of bail application it would be illegal so when the remand by judicial magistrate when the investigation cannot be completed within 24 hours it can be concluded that the provision is enacted in a manner so the favor of accused so the intention of section is to protect the accused from an unscrupulous police officers and uh, this is done by providing the maximum duration for which the accused cannot be uh, can be sent to the police uh, custody and the detention is police custody is uh, disfavored by the law as section provides that the maximum period for which the accused can be sent for the remand in police custody and the duration is 15 days and that to the initial 15 days period and note after that uh, in central bureau of investigation versus anupam jay kulkarni Kulkarni was arrested and produced before the chief metropolitan magistrate regarding the abduction of four diamond merchants. He pretended to be sick and was admitted admitted to hospital for treatment of his illness. Kulkarni was again remanded to judicial custody by the magistrate and thereafter he was sent to jail. The investigating officer applied to the chief metropolitan magistrate for police custody of Kulkarni in the view of the fact that the police could not take him into police uh, custody all these days as he was in the hospital. the police remand for kulkarni was refused by the court relying on the judgment of uh, state delhi administration versus zarampal a revision was filed before the high court against the order of the magistrate the high court gra- uh, granted the accused bail without deciding on the issue subsequently the order of the high court was challenged by the cbi now the main issue which was raised in this case was whether a person arrested and produced before the nearest magistrate as required under section 167 clause 1 of crpc can still be remanded to police custody after the expiry of the initial period of 15 days and another issue which was raised before the court 
were referring to the case of state versus Mahachand was whether a person arrested in respect of an offense committed by him during an occurrence can be detained again in the police custody in respect of another offense committed by him in the same case where the fact comes to light after the expiry of the period of 15 days of his arrest. The AC appearing for CBI contended that Dharampal's case has been wrongly decided and the High Court has erred in granting bail to Sri Kulkarni without deciding the question whether he can be remanded to police custody. According to him, there could be cases where a remand to police custody would become absolutely necessary at a later stage. He also submitted that in cases of grave nature, it would be impossible for the police to gather all the material facts within the first 15 days. And if some valuable information is disclosed at a later stage, and, with, and if the police custody is denied, the investigation will be hampered and would result in the failure of justice. He criticized uh, some of the judgments of the High Court. The first one is Arjian Singh was the state Delhi administration. The second one is Trilochan Singh was the state Delhi administration. A third one is state Delhi administration versus Dharampal, but the Delhi High Court overruled its decision in Jian Singh's case and Trilochan's case and held that the nature of the custody can be altered from judicial custody to police custody and vice versa during the first period of 15 days. After 15 days, the accused could only be kept in judicial custody and not in police custody. The fourth case, uh, which was uh, uh, criticized by the AS, uh, ACU, was uh, State versus Mehrchan. Referring to this case, the court came up with the second issue. The fifth one is State Delhi Administration versus Ravinder Kumar Patnagar. And sixth one is uh, State of Kerala versus Sadanand. Uh, Sri Jat uh, Malani, counsel for the respondent accused, submitted that Section 167 of CRPC is clear. And the police custody, if at all granted by the magistrate, should only be during the period of the first 15 days from the date of production of the accused before the magistrate and the subsequent custody, if any, should only be judicial custody. Moving on to the judgment of the uh, case, the court referred to section 167 of CRPC, which elab elaborates in detail the procedure to be followed when the investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours. Here in this case, the accused has already been in police custody for 15 days and therefore he could not be remanded to police custody either under section 167 or section 309 of CRPC. The court agreed to the case of Dharampal, where it stated that the custody after the expiry of the first 15 days can only be in judicial custody. The court also stated that the detention in police custody is generally dis disfavored by law. Such detention can be allowed only in special circumstances and only by a remand granted by the magistrate for reasons judicially scrutinized and for the necessity of the case. Also, if, the, uh, if during the investigation, the complicity of the accused is uh, in more serious offenses during the same occurrence is disclosed, uh, that does not authorize the police to ask for police custody for a further period after the expiry of the first 15 days. If that is permitted, then the police can go on adding offenses of serious nature at various stages and seek further detention in police custody. But this limitation does not apply to a different occurrence in which the complicity of the arrested accused is disclosed. That would be a different transaction. Thus, the Supreme Court in this case firmly held that after the expiry of the first 15 days, the further remand during the period of investigation can only be judicial custody. But recently, in the case of Central Bureau of Investigation versus Vishal Mishra, the court observed that it needs to reconsider this 1992 landmark judgment. In this case, CBI had moved to the Supreme Court seeking additional custody of an accused, Vikas Mishra, brother of former Trinamool Congress leader Vinay Mishra. Vikas was remanded to CBI custody for a period of seven days. However, he was hospitalized after, after two and a half days in custody and was later granted bail. His bail was cancelled and he was in judicial custody before being granted regular bail again. The investigation agency required for fresh custody of Vikas since he could not be interrogated by the CBI. Vikas lawyer opposed the fresh demand of the police uh, custody by citing this 30-year-old reasonant of the court, which ruled that the police custody beyond the period of 15 days from the date of arrest is not permissible. The court eventually granted four days of police custody to the CBI, stating that it requires to reconsider its own 1992 ruling in the case of CBI versus Anupam J. Kulkarni. Thank you, sir. The basic provisions of this case, uh, CBI versus Anubam Kulkarni, 
basically center around the concept of police custody and judicial custody and so uh, i would like to target this new area the provisions in india for holding a person in custody for the purpose of furthering investigation are governed by section 167 of the crpc uh, section 167 of the code allows that a person may be held in the custody of the police for a period of 15 days on the orders of a magistrate a judicial magistrate may remand a person to any form of custody extending up to 15 days and an executive magistrate may order for a period of custody extending up to 7 days a person may be held in custody of the police or in judicial custody it depends upon uh, the circumstances and the scenarios a police custody may extend only up to a period of 15 days from the date of uh, uh, from the date the custody begins but judicial custody may extend up to a period of 90 days for a crime which entails a punishment of death life imprisonment or a period of imprisonment exceeding 10 years and 60 days for all other crimes if the magistrate is convinced that uh, sufficient reasons exist following which the accused or suspect may be released on bail so the magistrate has the authority to remand the person into judicial or police custody uh, it is forced the detaining authority may be uh, ch- uh, changed due to the during the uh, pending uh, of the detention uh, provided that Uh, the total time does not extend 15 days if a person is transferred from police to judicial custody the number of days served in judicial custody is deducted from the total time remanded to judicial custody the most important difference is of the fact that the accused can be sent into police custody only within the first 15 days of the presentation before the magistrate after the arrest Uh, and it was held by the uh, supreme court in state versus dharmapal uh, 1982 as mentioned in uh, provision a uh, of uh, section 167 clause 2 but uh, moving on to our present case which is cbi versus uh, cbi special investigation cell i uh, was uh, new delhi versus anubam j kulkarni uh, which is a 1992 case uh, the question regarding arrest and detention in custody was dealt with uh, which was dealt with uh, was held basically under the premises of uh, section 167 clause 2 and the magistrate can authorize the detention of the accused in such custody as he thinks fit but it should not extend uh, over 15 days in the whole therefore the custody initially should not extend 15 days and the custody can be, uh, be police custody or judicial custody as the magistrate thinks fit uh, as per the criteria that i mentioned before the words such custody and for a term not exceeding 15 days in whole are very significant because on a combined reading of section 167 clause 2 and 2a it emerges that the judicial magistrate to whom the executive magistrate uh, magistrate has forwarded the arrest uh, arrested accused can order detention in such custody namely police or judicial custody as per section 167 clause 2 for the rest of the first 15 days after deducting the period of detention order ordered by the executive magistrate the detention thereafter could only be in judicial custody and so it is a really tricky and switcheroo effect kind of a scenario which is prevalent in such a case and we should also address the differences between uh, section 167 and uh, 309 of the crpc in the case of cbi versus davud ibrahim kaskar and others reported in 1997 uh, the uh, honorable supreme court held that there there cannot be any matter of doubt that the remand and the custody referred to in the first provision as per section uh, 309 uh, clause 2 are different from detention in custody under section 167 while the remand under the former relates to the stage after uh, relates to a stage after cognizance and can only be uh, to judicial custody detention under the latter relates to the state of investigation and can initially be either in police custody or judicial custody since however even after cognizance in, uh, cognizance is taken of an offense the police has a power to investigate into further uh, dealings which can be exercised only in order of chapter 12 
and there is no reason whatsoever why the provisions of uh, section 167 thereof would not apply to a person who comes to be arrested later by the police in the course of uh, the said investigation if section 309 clause 2 is interpreted to mean that the uh, to mean that after the court takes uh, cognizance of an offence it cannot exercise its power of detention in police custody under section 167 the ia or the investigation agency would be deprived of an opportunity to interrogate a person arrested during for the investigation even if it can uh, on production of uh, sufficient materials and evidences uh, convince uh, that the uh, convince the court that his detention in the police custody was essential for the purpose and therefore the words accused if in custody appearing in section 309 clause 2 refer and relate to the to an accused uh, who was before the court uh, when cognizance was taken or when inquiry or trial was being held in, in with respect to him and not to an accused who is subsequently arrested in the course of further investigation and certain cases that uh, are also relevant to the topic being dealt with are kami sanyal versus district magistrate of darjeeling where the supreme court uh, observed that while a person is committed to jail custody by a competent court uh, by an order while pr- uh, prima facie does not uh, appear to be without jurisdiction or wholly illegal a writ of habeas corpus in respect uh, of that person cannot be granted also it has been held that the crucial date when the legality of the re- remand is to be looked into uh it is also the date when the petition comes up for hearing and this was uh re- relevant in the case of kana versus state of rajasthan which is a 1980 case and the kami sanyal versus district magistrate case was a 19 uh, 90 case uh so coming back to kana versus state of rajasthan the jaipur bench of the rajasthan high court referring to the full bench decision of the high court in case of uh, babu nadan malla versus state of uh, versus state of uh, rajasthan uh, this is a 1972 case held that if the detention of the accused is illegal when the bail application is preferred his previous illegal detention should not be considered so covering all these uh, uh, holistic topics uh, my analysis comes to an end thank you